I'm Jamie LaBella, and this is 4 for 4 Science, where we discuss four science topics in just four minutes. Hurricane Matthew is strengthening. It's now expected to reach Florida by later tonight, where millions of Americans are preparing for what could be the most devastating hurricane to hit the East Coast in more than a decade. Claire, what do we know? Yeah, so it was originally actually a Category 5, which we haven't had one of those since 2007. Now it's Category 3. It might go up to a Category 4. But the biggest issues now that a lot of experts say is that there's going to be a huge danger in the Caribbean islands and Haiti um, because a lot of the like poorer populations actually live in the valleys beneath the mountains. And if there's going to be all this rainfall, there's going to be flash floods, and it's going to be a really big danger for those populations. James, how does a storm like of this magnitude form? Well, I mean, it's you know, it's, it's been building up for quite some time now. The, the worry for me is that, you know, you know, we have all this technology available to us and the National Hurricane Center does this great job but we're still unable to specify exact impacts along the America's coast and that's a worry to me you know I just really hope that people kind of take precautions they batten down the hatches and they basically get out the way of the storm and there's also this concern you know Florida's space coast is right there on the, where it's going to get impacted and Kennedy Space Center evacuated yesterday, but the launch pads and the buildings that are there, they're, they're built to withstand high winds, but if it strengthens, there's some uncertainty about how they'll do. And there's a damaged launch pad out there, so it could cause more damage. So terrifying. We can only hope that, you know, things are, things are okay in, you know, along the coast. Well, mission successful. Rocket company Blue Origin test launching an emergency separation of its crew capsule. Lauren, tell us about it. Right, so Blue Origin launched and landed its new Shepard vehicle for the fifth time yesterday. And we were promised explosions for this one, but it didn't happen. So yes, they tested the escape system. It's a feature where it's supposed to save the crew capsule filled with any future passengers in case the rocket blows up. So when they tested it, they thought it was going to destroy the rocket. But instead, the rocket just went up to space and it landed back down again. So now they're going to throw the vehicle a party. It's <laughs> bad news for SpaceX, though. Well, look, I think anything that kind of boosts space safety is good news for everyone, you know, and I think we're living in an interesting time. Like, we had all that news coming out of SpaceX and Elon Musk last week about his Mars plans, and now we have this. Like, kudos to Jeff Bezos. Like, this, this company's been doing great, great work around space for quite some time now, and again, look, it's safety, and it's great, and I'm glad that we're all talking about Claire, it. Claire, are we one step closer to launching into space now? Yeah, I mean, we actually haven't done um, emergency testing like this since the 1960s with the Apollo missions, so I think now with, like, space tourism and uh, people who aren't even astronauts going up into space, I think taking it more seriously is a really good thing. I think we're making history here, guys. We're making history. Well, let's go back in time. And an underground fire station has been found under a UK factory, and it hasn't been touched for half a century. James, this is an incredible story. Tell us about it. It's great stuff. So, yes, this, this underground fire station found underneath a factory. So I spoke to the company that owns the factory earlier this week, and they said they had some idea that there was something down there, but they didn't know quite what. They went away, they found the key, opened the door, and wow. So you've got like this really, really antiquated pump, all these hoses, the firemen's uniforms hanging on the walls with their names chalked or apparently chalked above them. It's just totally amazing. And I just love the whole idea that these time capsules are out there and basically we can go and find them and basically see what life was like for other people. Well, we see more of this going, going forward. I feel like we're always talking about discoveries like this on this show. I feel like mm -hmm. we're always unearthing artifacts from centuries ago and long lost tribes. And this is just an example of how there's so much exploring to do on our own earth. I'm all about exploring in the cosmos, obviously, but there's a lot to discover in our, in our own backyard. Claire? I think it was just insane how much of a picture of time we saw. I mean, there were half drink in the lemonade bottles, half drink in Pepsi bottles, so you can really tell that, like, you can see exactly what they were doing as they left. So cool. A time capsule underneath a, 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 a huge building, a UK fire. It's real urban history. Right. It really is urban history. Well, guys, moving to a dazzling meteor, and it was caught on camera this week. Lauren, what can you tell us about it? Right, so people in Canada got a bit of a show on Tuesday when they saw a meteor burn up in the atmosphere, but that's not what they thought they saw. They thought they saw a plane crash, um, but it turns out it was just a softball-sized meteor. It broke up about 19 miles above the Earth's surface. It happens all the time. It just doesn't usually happen in populated areas, so uh, it may be concerning at first, 
but it's really nothing to be alarmed about. Right? So I wish I'd seen this. I mean, kind of, I wish I'd seen it because it looked cool. The time lapse of it is amazing. But I may have also been freaked out by it. I may have thought that it was <laughs> some sort of like emergency situation. But it is part of a meteor shower that occurs this time of year. It was just we were lucky to catch one on camera. Have you ever seen something like this? I have never, but I think it's so interesting how many people saw it. And on Tuesday night, it was actually the perfect conditions to see this because there was a lot of dry air. There weren't a lot of clouds and the moon was actually just a sliver. So it was just the ideal conditions to see this. I think I would have thought maybe it was the space rocket going off at that point. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. 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 It was like, yeah, you, your mind doesn't go to meteor right away. 100%. <laughs> I didn't think it was dazzling. I was a little concerned and then I would be really excited that I just saw a meteor shower, which right. I've never seen. So now you know what we think, you guys. Ooh, we beat the buzzer. Tell us what you think using the hashtag 4 for 4 science.